Hey, old people, Crash Thompson here, and welcome to this quick ish review Whoa. of the latest from Jack Harlow, Jackman. I know this review is really late, but let me explain. Harlow dropped this on us very by surprise. The week before it dropped, he said, Hey, I'm releasing a new album. It's coming out on Friday. It's called Jackman. I didn't consult Hugh if that was okay, but whatever, I'm just gonna do it. And unfortunately, he also decided to drop this, again, the week while I was at Perpetual Flame. So, like, yeah, no way I was getting a timely video out on that. But if y'all follow me on Twitter, y'all probably were surprised to see my initial thoughts on it. Uh, yeah, I really liked this record at first, but I also figured I should sit with this one, because man, it is different. It's not what I was expecting, certainly. I don't think this was what anyone was expecting out of Jack Harlow. Now that I've had a bit more time to stew with it, a bit more time to actually settle and kind of analyze the songs a little deeper, I feel a bit more confident to talk on this, a bit more confident. I'll quit burying the lead. I don't like this album as much on subsequent listens. I will admit that first drop was a very pleasant surprise because like, yeah, from a basic standpoint, Harlow got insanely better uh, compared to Come Home The Kids Miss You. Good Lord, this album is head and shoulders and a whole other head on top of that fucking travesty. His flow is much, much better. The production, again, is also super, super good. Uh, if not derivative of a few places, like, ironic that we were in Chicago the weekend he dropped this because me and my buddy Adam, uh, while we were listening to it, uh, we both saw a lot of, like, kind of pre-808s Kanye, some of that like food and liquor Lupe, not in lyrical substance necessarily, but again, the production style, the kind of sonic elements and samples he was drawing from, from the rawest potential kind of musical elements. Yeah, this thing is just leagues ahead of the last record. And you know, I'll even say his lyricism is better on this one. I mean, again, that is not a high bar to clear, but it's interesting. He really just stepped out and tried to make a very serious record, or at the very least feels very from the heart. Like he is rapping his real feelings. He is not just flexing, not just showing off, but he's got some feelings about society, about his place in the whole hierarchy of hip hop, about his own personal feelings about his own sort of reputation. God help him, he's really trying to make some actual statements on this record. It's not just sweet, sweet semen, pineapple juice bullshit. He wants this album to be taken very seriously. And to his credit, in places he does show up. The opening track, Common Ground, has some surprisingly thoughtful lyricism from Jack on how white people interact with hip-hop culture versus how black people interact with hip-hop culture and how there's a lot of, you know, hypocrisy and a lot of stupid shit that white people do in this scene that, you know, they should fucking know better and people tell them to know better, but... Hey, common ground ain't that common, you know? On Denver, Harlow talks very frankly about his depression and his struggles with anxiety and how, like, even with his fame, even with his success, he still runs into these old habits and they're harder to conquer and, you know, no matter how much success or how many Rolexes you can buy for your wrist, it doesn't help you resolve the problems that are going on internally and... The world around you is still a scary and crazy place. Hell, it probably becomes even more scary when you reach that level. And on It Can't Be, Harlow also genuinely takes a look at that success and some of the lucky breaks he's had and has to genuinely wonder, is it just because I'm a white guy I've gotten these advantages? You know, is it just because I'm white people give me passes on certain things or my audience is just more willing to kind of take certain aspects from me, you know? He asks some interesting questions on that song. I won't say he comes to the best answers, necessarily. He is genuinely trying to bring across some of his wisdom and some of his genuine thoughts, some of the things he is actually pontificating about. In fact, the song Gang Gang Gang, like, that is also 
Another track I would never have thought or even necessarily wanted Jack Harlow to talk about. That track in particular is about when people in your community get caught doing really shitty stuff. In the song, one of Jack's friends is revealed to be a serial rapist. Another one is revealed to be an active pedophile. And in that track, he analyzes what it's like for the community to just kind of have to take that information in and realize, yeah, these people who you thought were your friends, these people who you thought you knew, had a side to them that you really didn't know, and that side is insanely dark, and now you gotta deal with that. Now you gotta try to figure it out in your own head and realize what you're gonna have to do to make things right by the rest of your community, by society. Again, th this is Jack Harlow. Jack friggin' Harlow. Remember the last record? My name is Jack Man Harlow, and I'm the king of doing code. Yeah, how is Jack Harlow talking about this stuff? And B, how is he doing a passable job at it? Well, I mean, I say passable. It's, um... <sighs> See, the thing is, I'm very give or take about it. Because on one hand, I respect Jack's kind of mission statement, mission statement with this record. I appreciate him dropping the clown shoes act because if anything, this record's very existence just shows us that was an act. That's what he thought we wanted to hear or that's what his handlers told him to make. I don't know. It just shows us that the last record was even worse than we could have suspected it to be because it was disingenuous on top of everything else. He's not actually this clown shoes motherfucker. He is genuinely an artist and someone who does at least to some certain degree, take his art very seriously. I appreciate him ripping off the clown mask and saying, fuck this bozo bullshit. I'm gonna be an actual rapper and actually talk about shit that matters to me. I feel like being more honest and vulnerable does work with Jack Harlow a bit. <sighs> the, the big problem, the big problem here that he is still Jack Harlow and God help him. Maybe that last record was more disingenuous, but it wasn't completely fake because man, some of that goofy shit sneaks its way onto here. Yeah, y'all, after Common Ground, he immediately hits us with they don't love it and ambitious and like, God help him, he just has to let those corny bars sneak in. When you make your serious record and you're still writing lines like, you boy striving to be the most dominant ever, the hardest white boy since the one who rapped about vomit and sweaters, scuffed up kicks, old navy my apparel, and I'm coming in my girl like I'm sterile, like, this is your serious record. This is the one where you take your shirt off and you do a big grimace and you're like, oh, uh, you take me seriously. I, uh, I'm a real rapper, man. And then you put shit like this in it still. Mm. That, like, that's the thing. If you're gonna rip the clown mask off, it's either all or nothing. You can't wipe off the makeup and leave the nose, homie. Just no. And you know, that is the album's biggest problem. It's a problem I've seen people who hate the record and people who love the record all saying is it's consistent big Achilles heel. The fucking tone. This is a hard thing to accept from Jack Harlow, period. That last record was such a fucking waka waka fozzy bear bullshit dick waggle fiesta. I don't even have the words for how ridiculous that record was, but now you're gonna turn around and try to convince us you're this real deal motherfucker. And that would be a hard sell, even if you'd pulled it off flawlessly. You know, it's like, what if Hobson decided to surprise drop a record on us and then declare, oh, this is me trying to be J. Cole. Yeah, even then you'd be like, uh, I don't believe you. So yeah, the prospect of an album like that is gonna be a hard sell to everyone across the board. When he does well, he does do genuinely pretty well, or at the very least, better than I ever would have suspected Jack Harlow would be capable of doing. But again, he still falters and he still makes a lot of the same Jack Harlow mistakes where it's impossible to take him seriously. On an album where you are begging, pleading with us to take you seriously, 
for you to do anything that's that goofy, yeah, dude, it's not, ugh. There's a lot to this record I genuinely enjoyed. I don't think it's going to be album of the year material by any means, but you know, if I had a category for most improved, I would basically have to give it to Jack Harlow. I got to admit, I like serious, raw, real, here's my actual heart and soul Jack Harlow more than I like goofy motherfucking first class. I like the best songs on this album more than I liked even the best songs off the last album. I know a lot of folks like first class and some of his more tolerable work. I feel like I'd just rather him be real with us and be actually kind of earnest in how he feels and rap about stuff that's actually important to him. When I do like this record, I really, really do want to stand up for it. But man, again, when it falls, it falls so hard. It makes me wonder which one is actually the real Jack Harlow. I mean, I sit here and I talk about how, oh, Jack is being real with us now, but is he? Is this? The real Jack Harlow, or is this also, or is this more so the act, or is this more so his team saying, "Oh, you were too ridiculous on that last record. We need you to pr pretend to be Mr. Hard and Mr. Uh, Mr. Serious Man." All right, uh, can can I still write lines about coming in, gals? You can have one. I don't know which one is real. Which one is the real Jack Harlow? Are you this gold chain goofball stoner idiot with a cream pie fetish? Or are you this real raw philosophical guy who really wants to have a serious conversation about his role in society and his role in hip hop? Seriously, which one are you? Because you cannot be Lupe Fiasco and the insane clown posse. You have to choose. I get why people don't like this one either. I know some people who hate this one even more than his last record. And the thing is, I get it because I, I still don't know if I know how to feel about this thing, but I, I don't know. Again, maybe it's just because when he does get real and when he does get raw, it feels the most real to me. And like, man, if that is really him, I want that to be the part of him that shines and shows forward. Like if that is genuinely who he is, He's good at it, and I want him to focus on that and sort of lean into that, if that's the real deal. With this record, he basically scaled an entire skyscraper as far as improvement in quality. But his last record dug him like a skyscraper's worth deep in the hole. So it's most improved, but it's from like negative 500 to five. <sighs> Do I even know what I'm talking about anymore? I'm just gonna give this like a solid to strong six. I... Ah. And that's the review. Review? Question mark? I don't know. Y'all obviously could tell I had a lot of weird conflicting feelings about this one. What did y'all think? Where was your mind at? Again, I would be thrilled to hear some of the discussion on this. Feel free to put that in the comments below. Again, I'm still working on the next uh, long form video. Um, still gonna try to put out a few reviews here and there, but I'm also I'm also gonna be on vacation uh, again uh, next week. Uh, I'm gonna be at Boston Calling. Um, just gonna be in town for the weekend. Uh, if you see me wandering around the grounds, leave me alone. I'm trying to watch Paramore. And kidding feel free to say hey if you're nice thanks again for watching feel free to hit that subscribe follow like all the usuals my name is crash thompson and i will see you when i see you